In this chapter, we will sculpt a variety of inlays and ornamental designs like leaves and swirls using a combination of masking techniques and brushes. All right, now we're going to start doing a bit more of the fun stuff. Uh, we're going to cut in the edges that you see here, these little inlays on the side of the mesh. Uh, we're going to add some designs here on the inlay, and then we're also going to do a lot of all the little hand sculpted designs that you see here. For those of you that are familiar with my YouTube tutorial about ZBrush sculpting ornamental designs that I showed on my highlighter walner piece, in a bit you may want to just skip through this chapter because it's going to go over the same things. But uh, for those of you that haven't done that, let's go ahead and get started. So back in ZBrush, uh, I've gone through, I've saved my sub tool again uh, for the amulet. I do that frequently. First thing I'm going to do is probably just give this little center area some ridge lines. So making sure that our symmetry is activated for the X and Y, but not the Z. I'm going to go through and start doing that. So let's go ahead and just kind of zoom in here so we get nice and close. I'm going to press B so we can pull up our damn standard brush by pressing D now. D is in dog, and we'll find damn standard brush. And I'm just going to go through here and kind of see what this is like. I need to adjust the settings just a bit. One thing that I like to do under here on stroke is under lazy mouse, I usually turn this off. And then I can have a little bit more control over my stroke. I'm going to make my brush size a bit smaller. I'm just pressing S on my keyboard to bring that up and down. Make that smaller, and then I'm just going to drag in some cuts here. And the other thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to turn on transparency for the back. And make sure, yep, this should be fine. So now what I want to do is create some little inlays that you see in here, similar to what we were showing here previously on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the entire amulet, and then I'm going to deselect from that a bit. I'm going to control click, go to the lasso section, and holding down control, alt click, I'm just going to cut away from the masking on here a bit. Just subtracting. And then I'm going to subtract from the sides here too, switching back to the mask pen. Control Alt drag out. And let's put our symmetry back on by pressing X. There we go. But I'm also going to do uh, Z symmetry this time. So now we can unmask both of them at the same time. I think we need to go in a little bit further. Something like that I think will be pretty good. I'm also going to cut away from the side here because I don't want to line just all the way through. I have it solid here and solid here. So control alt drag click here, something like that. Control alt drag. So I think this will work out pretty well. I'm just going to once again blur the edge a bit by control clicking this. And then I'm going to control click to invert the mask. And then we're going to go back to our deformation tool. And once again, we're going to use that inflate tool. But this time we're going to go negatively. I think that feels about right. I'm just going to go through and uh, smooth these out a bit. Once again, I've still got symmetry activated. I'm holding down the shift key so that we can smooth these out, just some of these um, areas that we're getting a little bit faceted as we pulled them out. And that helps with that really sharp edge where the mask was. That's what I love about having all this symmetry stuff set up perfectly because we can just do so much of this at the exact same time without having to spend a lot of time going through step by step by step, redoing things over and over. 
Okay, cool. So now we have like a nice little inlay that'll just give us an extra nice little 3D touch. I think now it's time for us to start working on some of these intricate inlays. And for those of you that uh, watched that tutorial before the Dark Souls one with the ornamental designs, this won't be new to you. So you can skip ahead if you want. But otherwise, here we go. So one thing I'm going to have to do is on the symmetry, let's turn off the back symmetry because we do not want to be sculpting on the back here. Also, too, just to kind of clean up my scene, I'm going to hide the uh, onyx stone. We don't need to have that right now. So what we want to do is just start kind of creating some interesting floral shapes. So I'm going to go back to our standard brush and then just using the mask pen brush and the freehand thing, I'm just going to start kind of painting out some designs. Now I'm just keeping it really loose right now because I know I can go through and change this after. The idea is to get the big shapes first. Right now I'll paint something that maybe looks a little bit like a, a mustache, like the, for those of you that uh, are in the States and eat Pringles, it'll look kind of like the Pringles mustache. But in the end it's actually going to be a leaf. Okay, and then I'm going to have another one doubled up on top of this. In the end, what this is going to end up looking like is something like this up here. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I need to get these edges a little bit sharper. So now I'm going to start cutting away by doing control alt clicking with my mask. I'm going to make my brush size a little bit smaller. So the idea is I get my uh, big shapes first and then I go through after and I finesse it a bit more. So I can get those more um, curvy looking lines that just feel a little bit nicer. And you guys can make whatever shape you want. You can make a flower, or some different type of designs. Doesn't really matter. Me, because this Japanese crest design that I have later kind of focuses on like natural elements. Um, I'm natural elements like leaves and things like that. That's why I'm deciding to do kind of like a, a leaf type shape. So we have that. So let's go ahead and invert this. And once again, I'm going to use that inflate brush. Pardon me, I mean inflate deformation tool. So let's just drag that out a bit, get that to pop. That's a little bit too much. I think maybe around 10 is going to be the right size, maybe five. I'm just going to go a little bit on this and then I'm going to do an inflate balloon in a second. Okay, we'll just keep it really subtle. Now I'm going to do inflate balloon again. I'm using the mouse left click button to do this numerically because this is just a higher processing thing and I don't want to crash our scene. So now we have kind of like a nice um, pillowed edge coming out. It's maybe just a bit too much. So I'm going to set this down to three instead of five. Okay, that feels a little bit better to me. It's feeling a little bit more organic. Uh, I'm going to clean up some of this here by just pressing uh, shift. And then the next thing I think we need to do is let's make it feel like we have layered leaves on top of one another. And I'm going to do that by just masking a bit more of this in. Um, so there we go. Imagine. Um, Now we just need to make this bottom one pop a bit more. I'm actually going to switch to our lasso tool to make sure we're getting all of this. Oops, I was cutting away from it. So control, clicking, and dragging around this. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. I, I just need to make sure this flows really nicely through here. So I'm going to control alt click this with the lasso. do the same over here. All right. I think now we have a pretty good setting for this. 
So I'm just going to come back to our standard brush and I'm going to increase the size. And I'm going to come up here to stroke. Let's turn off the lazy mouse and relative, which is now going to make it very, very strong. So let's turn the Z intensity down something like eight. And then now we're just kind of going over top of this with our standard brush, which is in a way kind of just extruding this up so that we get that more pillowed out leaf type feel. You know, I'm not going to get this perfect, but just imagine, you know, the camera is going to kind of see this from back here. So it doesn't have to be completely flawless. And then I'm going to uh, press shift to smooth this out a bit, especially the section over here where it's overlapping. I'm going to invert the selection. And one thing I like to do sometimes is I'll press alt on the keyboard for the brush to kind of have the other one go down just a tiny bit, which will get a little shadow underneath. And then I'm going to decrease the size of the brush. And then pillow this out here. I do a lot of inverting of my mask and then working like this to get fine details. So now if I was to clear this mask, you can see we have something that feels like a, a bit of a, a layered leaf, which next step I think we need to go through and then give it some veining in here. So let's do that. And this time we'll use the damn standard brush. This is a little bit too big, so let's decrease the size. And also I want to make sure, yep, symmetry is still activated. And maybe, you know what, I'll kind of cut it down the center here too, even though that's not perfect. Do it over here. And then we'll do like the little side pieces here. It could take some more time to make this perfect, but in the end, you're really not gonna see it because we're never going to get this close to it. That's the one thing a lot of people sometimes try to make everything super, super perfect whenever they're doing CG. If the camera's not going to see it, don't worry about it. I guess in this case, it's up to you guys. Like if you're going to take this and 3D print it afterwards, then you'd have to make it look good from a lot of angles. Um, when I was working on my High Lord of Walner skull, I ended up 3D printing that. So that was one of the longest uh, asset creation times it ever took me for something because since I was 3D printing it, I had to make sure every single little angle and corner looked good since it became a real life thing. Normally in CG, especially if you're in video games or a production environment, if a camera doesn't de see something, you just don't spend time making anything. You just don't have time to do it. All right. So now we have one group of leaves that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's take a look next. Um, now we have this more kind of trolley design here. Um, let's go ahead and make those. This is definitely along the lines of the uh, ornamental sculpting tutorial on my YouTube channel. But I'm going to use the same technique to start with by switching this back to our mask pen brush. And then we're just going to kind of draw out some nice looking ornamental designs. Basically just making like some S hooks and stuff like that. So for me, it's not about getting the perfect design the first time you draw it out. It's about getting the main shape and then you can come through after and uh, refine it. So now I'm going to control alt click and then work on this to uh, remove some from it. Get that nice sharp fall off. I remember when I was working on the High Lord of Walner Skull, 
I did this so many times at first it was really fun and then after doing that for maybe about 10 hours it started getting a little old <laughs> but felt like I was pretty good at making ornamental swirls when I was done with it just repetition over and over and over Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's add a little bit up here as well. I think that's a little bit too big. And this one will make it extra big, at least on this side. And we'll even take one and kind of make it come out here a bit. And as usual, refine pass. Control Alt clicking to then remove away from it as I'm cutting that away. And the cool thing in a little bit is when we start doing the Japanese crest design, we'll be doing kind of the same thing as this, but we're going to be doing it with a whole bunch of uh, control because we'll be doing it based off of designs that we'll create in Photoshop and use in um, with our UVW maps that we created. This way is just faster, more freehand, doesn't have to be super accurate. But I can imagine the, uh, the one that I'll show you next, the next technique with the crest. That'd be a good example of how you would do something for a production environment that had to be really, really exact to the design, maybe an art director or a concept artist created. This is just fun, freeform stuff. Okay, we have these. Let's go ahead and, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit more to the side here. Maybe even down here, let's just punch that out just a wee bit more and then take a little bit out. Okay. All right, we have that selected. Let's invert that selection. And I'm sure you can guess what I'm gonna do now. That's right, we're going back to deformation. We're gonna inflate and then combine that with the inflate balloon brush. That's going out way too much. I just want to be really subtle on this. In fact, I think I'm going to do this numerically just to have a little bit more accuracy. I'm just doing like a three on this and then let's do inflate balloon. Let's do maybe a three on that too. Okay, I think this is maybe a little bit too much. Let's do the inflate balloon to two. And if we zoom out, I think that will probably work nicely. So one additional little thing I want to do to this. Oh, and before I uh, get rid of the mask, let's undo that. Let's control click invert the mask again. One little trick that I like to do sometimes just to make things sit a little bit more into the mesh so that you can get some nice shadows falling off, just like a little CG trick, is to go through and then afterwards you can kind of just use the damn standard brush and cut in around the edges of your mesh. And then later, whenever you're uh, rendering, the light just catches a lot nicer in there and it really pops those 3D designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the mesh and uh, I'm gonna stop talking for a minute and this will be sped up in the time lapse. Okay, so now we have those nice little inlays, and uh, for the most part, we're done with this section. Actually, no, there's one thing I forgot. So I'm going to just smooth this out a little bit down here, but uh, just to give this so it doesn't feel like a little noodle on top, 
one thing that I like to do is use the damn standard brush with an invert setting. So I'm going to change from Z sub to Z add. And I'll usually go through the top here. I just increase the size and I give it like a little ridge line right on the top. You may have to do it a few times to kind of get it perfect in here. In the end, I'm not getting it perfect, but you get the idea. And then from the side, it's just feeling a little bit too sharp, but it gives it this nice crest. So I'm going to go through now and then just smooth that out a bit, holding down the shift key. That'll just give this a little bit something nicer to catch a light with that'll feel a little bit more ornamental. All right, looking pretty cool. Uh, the final thing that I want to do with this is I think I'm going to go through and add like some extra little designs like you see uh, in here, like these little swirls and whatnot. So let's go ahead and do that with the damn standard, but let's change it to a sub. And you had to make your brush size really small. And just go through here and make something that you think looks cool. I'm obsessed with swirls, so I'm going to be doing lots of swirls. But maybe on the inside, right, like you have something in here, you can kind of come in and give some different shape, maybe even some uh, little circles, just anything that's going to give this some more interest. And later, whenever we're texturing this, um, these little details are going to be quite nice for getting what looks like almost kind of dirt falling in cracks and stuff. This is just design I'm doing on the fly, I'm not really looking at any reference, just thinking in my head what looks cool. And I think I'll uh, go ahead and speed up the time lapse again and stop talking for a minute so that you can see this happen really quickly. Okay, final thing I'm going to do is come through here and just on this edge, make it a little bit deeper. And one thing that you can do to have control over this is as you're dragging down, if you press shift on your keyboard, it'll lock it to a straight line, which can be pretty beneficial for getting something uh, really accurate looking. Of course, over here, you can't really do that. But I can do it up here again. I'm going to just smooth out a couple of these little places here. Some of the uh, geo starts to get pinched whenever there's like those pillowed edges that come close. All right, I think we are done with that, the ornamental designs, and we have tons of detail on here. Uh, I'm gonna press P to go on perspective mode. I'm gonna do a real quick save on this. Let's call this Amulet D. I've been saving quite a few of these. I hope you guys have too. And let's just do a quick BPR render. Should get some nice shadows, but already this is starting to feel like something. Uh, you know, pretty soon we'll be able to get this going on once we get things in the key shot. But next chapter, we're going to go through and then finally using those UVW maps that we've been saving this entire time, we're going to go ahead and create this uh, crest mask that you see here and do final sculpting.
This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.